Good evening. This is Maestro Cortella with the Dawn of War 2 Retribution Elite Modcast. Today, we have a 3v3 on Garvis Icegate. Our first player is the Admiral. I like that name, the Admiral. He is playing as Papa Nurgle, the Plague Champion, dedicated to the God of Nurgle, Death and Decay, and despite being dedicated to a God of Death and Decay, he has lots of healing capabilities. He can even repair as well. Uh, he can, and he can also build turrets. Starts off with a damage over time bolter, but you can get melee weapons later on. Next up, we have Reaper God 36 playing as the Tech Marine. Tech Marine is a Space Marine ranged hero. He has a gun for every occasion. He, have, he even has an axe for melee occasions. He can repair vehicles, build relay beacons, and turrets. Next up, we've got Cider Warp playing as a Space Wolves Force Commander. He's got Cyrus head, Cyrus's head and uh, a big bear on top of his head as well. Looks Really looks more like a bear than a wolf, but anyway. Tanky melee hero get, can disrupt, tie things up, and tank damage. On the other team, first of all, we've got Damien237 playing as the Grey Knight Bro Captain. Bro Captain is yet another tanky melee hero. This one does not have a whole lot of disruption to start out unless you get lucky with a special attack. But he is very, very good just for raw tankiness. He's in Terminator armor. He's got a thousand hit points to start out. He cannot be knocked down or suppressed. And some upgrades make him even tankier. Next up, we've got... Uh, oh, where is he? We've got Thor. Thor is here. Thor is playing as the Force Commander. Uh, same thing as before. And then finally, we have Legendmere playing as the Lord Commissar or the Commissar Lord. Slightly tanky melee hero. He's got a free energy shield, and he can use that pistol right there to execute his own troops. Makes him fight quite a bit harder. 100% harder, in fact. All right, we've got an engagement in the middle with some space marines. Tax deciding to force melee, attempt force melee against this very low health tech marine, but uh, Tax from Thor decide to get out of there so that they will not lose any models in that engagement. But here comes the double, Legend Mirror coming to the middle, and that's going to result in the uh, the hero incapacitation on the tech marine who was to be uh, extend. He was overextended, to be honest. We do have some support from the Admiral now, uh, although he's all right. He's going to charge in with the heretics. I don't know what these tactical marines are doing. They need to get out of there and not let themselves get hit by um, this Commissar Lord, who, by the way, has upgraded to the Power Sword. That's why he's doing a special attack with every strike, because he upgraded and he used the lead by example. He nearly wiped out that attack squad. Wow. And now he's going for some scouts as well. This Commissar is getting fed some experience pretty early on, and nearly level 2 right at the start of the game. Although, uh, to be fair, way... Reaper God definitely way overextended those two squads. Lost two models on each very, very unnecessarily. Force Commander for Thor is uh, getting out of here. Right and, uh, oh, Inquisitorial Stormtroopers need to get going. Even though two scouts are not a whole, not terribly strong, uh, neither are two Stormtroopers. Neither are two Inquisitorial Stormtroopers. So, blue team look, appears to have taken the lead in that early engagement. Uh, I did see a shotgun upgrade. Alright, there is a shotgun upgrade. This one, no upgrade. And uh, nothing capturing the contested VP. Get on that, scouts. He's not doing it. Alright. Instead, we've got a sentinel doing a little bit of harassment. Harassing the heretics. If anything, I feel like he should not have unworshipped the heretics. He should start putting pressure on that sentinel um, with these chaos space marines that are just standing there and capping for some reason. Now, most of these names here are probably not very familiar to you. I recognize three out of six. You may not recognize any. Um, so, some of the players here are probably newer players. That's what it also appears like based on their profiles, which I checked before the start of their start of this game. And I'm kind of taking a risk here. I don't know how good this game will be, but it is 35 minutes long. So, it should be good enough. We'll see, though. Or we won't, because if it's not good enough... I won't upload it. Anyway, Interceptor's now out for Damien, scaring off both attacks as well as the uh, scouts. And we're going to have a bit of a generator bash by Damien right here. He's got his double Inquisitorial Stormtroopers as well as the Interceptors. That should be a reasonably good generator bashing force. Taking out this, genera this one generator in decent time with plenty of time to spare because nothing appears to be coming back to it uh, anytime soon. 
Anyway, one tax squad right, right here needs to get out of there. It's actually going to get caught in retreat. And wow, whoa! That tax squad got fully wiped. The Commissar went in there with the Power Sword, and I think all the, also the Sentinel Stomp really contributed to that tax squad getting wiped in retreat at a time when it looks like that squad was not going to get wiped in retreat. Um, so obviously the Commissar did have the Power Sword, and that definitely contributed to the tax getting wiped. And the Sentinel Stomp is actually really good, or it's, it's good for helping to kill retreating units. Since it does, I believe the Sentinel Stomp does melee damage, which is, which so it actually would do bonus damage to units in retreat. And it also seems to make any units that it hits in retreat, it kind of stops them for a second. And uh, yeah, Sentinel way out of position there for Legend Mirror, it gets wiped, it really did not have a chance. I think just a little too brazen going for a decap on the uh, blue team's natural VP. But the red team right now looking pretty good, even though the blue team had won the, did they win the initial engage engagements? I don't remember exactly. All right, Plague Champion will be revived by the Force Commander. Force Commander is almost level three, and he retreats out of there very unnecessarily. I'm not sure what was going on right there. Meanwhile, the Force Commander for Thor is um, just eating grenades right now and not doing anything about it. Assault Marines jump in, and right now those, those Assault Marines, Assault Marines are fairly uncontested because. The Admiral upgraded both of his heretics to have grenade launchers, so he doesn't really have a whole lot in terms of melee counters. What's really saving these, uh, what's really saving these assault marines at the moment, or rather, actually not saving the assault marines, what's really killing them and then saving the blue team, um, is that the Devastator Marine was set up in behind for Reaper God. And in fact, this Devastator Marine squad really does appear to really is really helping them uh, hold their ground. We do have a uh, heavy bolter team on the other side from Legend Mirror going to suppress the Chaos Space Marines, but they should be fine to just walk out of there since they are, they are of course, pretty tanky, uh, having heavy infantry armor, and they also are getting healed by the Heretic Worship, so those Chaos Space Marines can kind of stay in there for a while. Meanwhile, double attacks are advancing towards the Guardsmen. And right now, the double attacks are definitely going to have an advantage over the Guardsmen. However, the Guardsmen are upgrading to Plasma Guns, which is certainly a good choice against a team full of Power Armor players that... Not only is it a, is it a team full of Power Armor players, but they're going with Power Armor heavy builds. Reaper God choosing to get double attacks. Uh, the Admiral choosing to get double CSM. And then we also have the Devastator Marine Squad as well. So definitely plenty of things that are going to take a lot of damage. Meanwhile, we have a Stern Guard... A Stern Guard upgrade at a rather inopportune time, although I suppose it does not really matter if they lose models while upgrading at the moment. Um, actually, maybe it's not that bad of an idea, because they, they are about to change, and we have, we're going to have fresh Stern Guard veterans who are going to start shooting the crap out of things. And uh, Commissar Lord also doing very, very well. And this is the one, yeah, he's got the Power Sword, so that's going to make him pretty good for dealing damage to the Chaos Space Marines. He does have to be careful, though, of course, because Chaos Space Marines do quite a bit of melee damage for a ranged squad. Better than pretty much any other ranged squad in the game, to be honest. In fact, well, actually, no, I think Strike Squads do more. Anyway, we do have a Grey Knight Rhino out for Damien, who has also lost two of his Inquisitorial Stormtrooper squads. Uh, I believe he is one of the newer players. Let's see if he can finish off this Assault Marine squad, though. Charging forward, but the last cannon is targeting the attacks and missing them. So it looks like the Assault Marine is going to get out of there just fine. 23 hit points across two models. Pretty lucky for Cider Warp. Bro Captain, meanwhile, chasing after some scouts. Uh, he does not have an upgraded weapon, but I think he does. Actually, I have no idea how much damage he does um, with his starting sword. Rhino is actually taking some light damage because the Force Commander is trying to chop it up with his Power Sword. And the Rhino isn't even doing that much damage to the Force Commander. Laz Cannon is either missing or targeting other things, and the Storm Bolter not doing a whole lot. We've got the Brother Captain knocking on the door of uh, the Scouts, but the, um, but the Scouts and the Tax are smart enough to not open the door for him. They don't let him in. They don't let in this big bad wolf of, of a Brother Captain, and uh, Brother Captain goes down. So overall, not a good engagement for Damien, really, even though it took him a long time and he stayed in there for a long time. Stern Guard veterans equipping anti-cover rounds, that is the Dragonfire rounds, 
Uh, that is a, a ammunition that will counter things that are in cover, as well as things that are in garrisons. Anyway, Grey Knight Rhino still around here. Now, the Grey Knight Rhino, with this LAS cannon, uh, it, does, it is pretty versatile because you have both an anti-vehicle weapon as well as an anti-infantry weapon. Right there, the anti-vehicle weapon actually gives some scouts. Or not really give, but it killed them. Um, although I feel like in this kind of versatile form, it's not particularly good at either one. Last cannon. Last cannon actually kills another scout, so maybe I should shut up. Anyway. Heavy weapon team targeting some things. It looks like we had a bit of a like a side assault by Legend Mirror that worked out pretty well for him. However, a scout grenade goes in on the heavy weapon team, explodes one of the models, two of the models, uh, and heavy weapon team now in a little bit of trouble. Scouts run out of energy, but they do manage to get in time to force melee the heavy weapon team into kicking it. And this Commissar way, way out of position. He is going to go down if he uh, does not retreat right now. And actually, I think he will be fine. He does have stubbornness. So I think once he gets in range of some units, maybe he'll go down or he'll restore some health. There we go. There is a health restore from stubbornness, and he is just, just fine. Whirlwind now out for Thor. Shooting some missiles from long range. More missiles going in, not really doing a whole lot of damage, but certainly disrupting a lot of things. And uh, the combination of the scouts and the stern guard veterans actually have a really, really strong position at the moment. Um, even though there's more things here, I think the scouts should probably do a shotgun blast or, or yeah, a shotgun blast too, so that they can retain the advantage for a little bit. All right, there they get jumped, and they are no longer in a good position. Uh, a missing shotgun blast from Thor's shotgun scouts, though. He could have held, though. He could have held in that cover for a little bit longer if he had shotgun blasted a little earlier. So instead, he's kind of in retreat or just soft pedaling, moving back. But here is the support from uh, from the admiral or from Legendmere, rather. So, and this is actually ending ending up being murder. And uh, Red Team actually doing very, very well now, nearly wiping a few squads. And that support from Legend Mirror proving to be very, very powerful. In fact, we have triple, we have double scouts and a stern guard from Thor. So he's definitely got some very tanky and durable firepower. Uh, and he's got fully upgraded. So yeah, Thor has Thor has both a lot of damage coming out of his build and, uh, and he's very tough. Meanwhile, it looks like Reaper God actually has triple tax of his own. And he's got plasma guns on his tax, so he's probably going for that. Like as a way of countering, but I think the composition, if anything, is actually stronger for the red team, uh, given their artillery support as well as their higher amount of oh, what a what a painful grenade, as well as their higher amount of suppression teams. Anyway, vengeance rounds from the uh, devastator marine squad unloading on the on the uh, commissar lord. Commissar does run out of there, and he seems to be running to the side. Probably going to try to go for a flank, but he's just taking way too much damage. If anything, oh, Commissar goes down, and we have uh, more things going down. Blood Crusher dies. Ogrens try to charge in, but just take way too much damage. Yeah, this isn't really something you can just charge in. You need to you need to break this somehow, and everything's retreating to this relay beacon set up by Reaper God, which is extremely, extremely powerful in team games. Meanwhile, we've got purifiers for Damien, uh, one of which got gived, and these purifiers need to get out of there. They are not in a winning position at all, as strong as they are. Rhino needs to move back. If anything, this Rhino is really lucky that uh, Cider Warp is kind of generous at the moment, and so far there hasn't really been a whole lot to threaten this Rhino, except for this missile attack that is now approaching, but that's just a lone missile attack. Not a whole lot of hard AV coming out of these players right here. So, VPs 2-1 to one for the red team, but soon to be 1-1. One to one. And a real VP lead of 351 to 274 in favor of the red team. Rhino keeps moving back, but it needs repairs. There's way too much stuff here, and the Rhino is just not going to have enough of an impact against the forces right here. Damien's going to need something else. Meanwhile, oh no, the Admiral about to get hit very, very hard. About to get doubled. And I think the Admiral is one of the newer players here. He's worshipping. But at this point, to be honest, I think he should really just retreat out of there. Lost a Heretic Squad. Lost a Blood Crusher. Going to lose a Chaos Space Marine. And, uh, yeah. Oh, but here is... Here is a play Cloud. Um, that part was at least well, well played enough. And he's actually going to take out all of the Guardsmen. Um, for Legend Mirror, who really should have caught that earlier. They did a lot of damage to the Admiral, but at least the Admiral had a bit of an answer uh, to them. 
uh, heavy weapon team way out of position. But the all the forces by Reaper God just kind of got scared off. And, I mean, he probably could have actually stuck around in that engagement and probably would have done just fine. But I think he just decided to retreat out of there, be better safe than sorry, and he knows that he doesn't have to retreat that far away because the relay beacon is right here. You know, Grey Knight Rhino is actually still alive and, and still doing not a whole lot of damage. If anything, this particular Rhino would have been way better off with a Heavy Bolter. Anyway, Meltabomb goes in on the Rhino. Does quite a bit of damage because it was a rear armor hit. Uh, but overall, while well, Interceptors still have four out of four models, pretty lucky to still have four out of four models. And this Rhino has really, really been left unchallenged for the most part by Cider War. And he should be one of the more experienced players here. Alright, Rhino now is moving back. It does level to two, so actually it is killing things. Oh, I didn't even realize there was a Bro Captain here. Where did he come from? He's got the Nemesis Warding Staff, so he's got a pretty nice and powerful weapon. And of course, he does get the Ward ability out of that as well, which we haven't actually seen yet. Meanwhile, we've got some Ogrins that are beating apart some Chaos Space Marines. I think they will wipe the Chaos Space Marine with ranged fire. Little, uh, relatively unknown fact. Ogrins actually do pretty good damage with their ranged weapons. It's actually something like on par with the starting damage of Chaos Space Marines. Which is pretty good for a dedicated melee unit. In fact, it, it's probably one of the best range damages for a dedicated melee unit. Um, and I think I heard that they might even have 100% fire on the move. Anyway, flank coming in by Reaper God on Legendmere. Legendmere not reacting in time, most likely going to lose this heavy weapon team. Uh, to be honest, even as Ogrens are in trouble, they lose their bonehead leader. Commissar will get out of there just fine. And no force melee on the heavy weapon team. I'm going to say, like, if he had force meleeed that heavy weapon team, that would have been a guaranteed wipe um, on the heavy weapon team. Should have been some force melee. Should have been even been force melee on the Ogrens. Probably could have taken out an Ogren model. At, at least an Ogren model if he had forced melee the Ogrens as well. So, missed opportunity right there by Reaper God. Here are some chosen Plague Marines from the Admiral who has lost a lot of things. Uh, he has lost a Chaos Space Marine. He has lost a Heretic Squad. I believe he has lost at least one Blood Crusher, if not two. I definitely saw him building a second Blood Crusher, but I don't know if it ever actually hit the field. And now it's the blue team um, with the double cap and the lead in VPs, 274 to 191 for them. Last Cannon Rhino does actually get a direct sh shot with the, uh, the against the Force Commander, and Force Commander does a very puzzling short-range teleport, rather unnecessary, ends up with him having to teleport out of there very soon, and overall not a winning engagement for Cider Warp at all, so Damon's now doing well, he should be able to capture, he should be able to capture the main point, um, he runs into Shotgun Scouts who blast away, uh, the Interceptors as well as the Purifiers, but they just get right back up since the scouts are unsupported. We have another squad of scouts coming out for Cider Warp, but they are just a squad of Bolter Scouts, no shotguns. They won't actually be able to do a whole lot to the Interceptors and the Purifiers might go for a grenade, do in fact go for a grenade, and unfortunately for Damien, he does not react soon enough. But it doesn't even matter that much. Those units are so tough right here, it doesn't even kill a model and they're content to just still bash the power. Looks like Reaper God is coming in through the middle, start, starting to blast away some Stormtroopers, and that also means we have a missile launcher that's going to go after the Rhino. Ogren's heart all the way on this side, and the Rhino, unfortunately um, for Damien, he's not reacting. He probably is has his attention up here with the Bro Captain as well as... Uh, as well as the purifiers, so it looks like does he get the he does get the rhino out alive? I'm wrong with one hit point. Wow, even plasma fire could have finished that off. To be honest, even bolter fire, this much bolter fire could have finished off that rhino. So incredibly lucky to get that rhino out alive. And uh, purifier is way overextended, and they are also lucky to not get wiped. Bro captain, meanwhile, he just might go down. He also needs to retreat out of here. Looks like we have another play cloud, but this one uh, not really moving from the Admiral. And the Admiral actually has replaced a lot of his stuff, so he, now he has a lot of squads. He's got a fresh squad of Zinch Chaos Space Marines. And wow, all of those units were getting suppressed by the Chaos Shrine of Nurgle. They were just standing there, and despite the superior squad count by Thor, um, 
that was not going to be a winning engagement for him because he had all of those squads suppressed by the Nurgle Shrine. Uh, and then Thor could have, or Ad the Admiral could have just moved in with, with the Heretics as well as the Xenge Cast Space Marines and just started killing models off of all of those things. So, a very, very surprising way to win an engagement here. Unfortunately, the Admiral not really doing uh, things he needs to do. Like, these these heretics should really be repairing this Chaos Shrine of Nurgle at the moment. As long as he's committed to this Chaos Shrine of Nurgle, he should keep it up. It's not the best place for it, uh, considering just what you want to control on this map. Right now, it's, it's away from the VPs. And uh, the Plague Champion actually looks almost a bit like the almost like the Chosen Plague Marine models as well, because we have the Chosen Plague Marines. Well, they have helmets, they have special helmets, and they've got those weird swords and plasma pistols. Not a very powerful unit in terms of damage, but pretty good for countering melee. Grenade's going to go in right here from the Scout Marines. They're going to get a sh they're getting a shotgun upgrade, and now they're force meleeing, which well. The force melee. The force melee does prevent the devastators from setting up and shooting, but they weren't going to do that much damage in melee. Red team moves back into the contested VP. We've got both Legendmere and Damien setting up. We have a late multi-laser turret. I'm not too too sure about that decision, but we'll see how it goes for him. Commissar Lord is back on his feet, level four, fully upgraded too. Carapace armor, power sword, as well as stubbornness. Bro Captain, meanwhile, not fully upgraded. Only has the weapon. And wow, a disruption by the interceptors and, and a Manticore strike as well to follow it up, I think? No. Maybe. Or that was just a Commissar Flare. Another teleport by the interceptors, some more disruption for them, some pretty good interceptor use. And uh, these Imperial Guard units all the way in back doing pretty well. Assault Marines meanwhile jumping in. This is not looking good for Cider Warp. He is really, really overwhelmed. He's got things behind him, things in front of him. He is shooting at the Rhino with some uh, Vengeance Rounds, which should do some damage. Damien is not moving it. All right, now he starts moving it. But overall, wow, it looks like Cider Warp about to lose Attack Squad. I think he'll be lucky to get out of there alive. It's a pretty close call, but I think he will get it out of there alive. But again, still a really, really close call. Ogun's going to try to finish off with their ranged weapons. All right, not this time, but again, a very close call. Cider Warp with some Vanguard veterans right now does manage to actually take out the multi-laser turret, which is not terribly surprising. Um, and the Force Commander for Thor goes down. And we do have some support for Reaper God, in fact. With his uh, triple attack build. And the Teleporter Relay Beacon still up and definitely supporting the... Oh, there is the Manticore Strike. Manticore Strike, of course, very, very powerful. And what is that sound? Oh, I didn't even see these Paladins come out for uh, Damien. That should probably be a wipe on the Force Commander unless he teleports out of there. That's what he has to do. Force Commander down. We had a Merciless Strike from the Vanguard Veterans, but I don't think the Paladins care. And these Vanguard Veterans, again, way overextended. And if Thor... Well, wow, these Vanguard Veterans are going to go down anyway. I was going to say, if Thor had his tax in a position to Force Melee, those Vanguards would go down. They went down anyway. Unfortunately, very, very overextended by Cider Warp. Grenade goes in from Cider Warp, but doesn't actually do that much damage. And we have attack squads just trading blows. Oh my god! We have a... We have an orbital bombardment, and it appears to be completely missing. Three beams pla all placed in one spot. Here's a rocket run as well. And on the other end of that rocket run... Uh, not bad. So unfortunately, a very poorly placed orbital bombardment. All three beams in the same place. That looked like it was going to be nice and juicy on those tacks who looked like they were kind of in a losing position right there. Um, Rocket Run was okay. It, the first one kind of missed. The second one hit pretty nicely. If he had managed to get both, he might have been able to take out one of the tax squads. And these tacks are now getting really, really tough because we've got two squads. All of Reaper God's tacks are level three. Meanwhile, Chosen Plague Marines are doing their best against Paladins, and they stood up there, they stood in there for surprisingly long, but ultimately they are no match for the Paladins. And the Paladins themselves are running into sudden death, running into way too many things. I need I think they need to teleport out of there so that they are safe. One Paladin model goes down from a Laz Cannon shot. They activate the Holy Ground ability, but one model goes down, two models down, and uh, just 126 hit points left on that Paladin squad. Here's another Manticore Strike. They definitely need to bombard the Relay Beacon with Manticore Strikes. 
If anything, I think it might even be worth it. Well, Legendmere has invested in a Lehman Rust. If anything, I think it might have been worth it to go for a second Manticore, uh, kind of as a way for really punishing for really punishing this relay beacon. They gotta do something about that beacon because otherwise it's gonna win the game for the blue team. And to be honest, often the relay beacons do win the game in team games. It is extremely, extremely powerful. Scout Squad went down for Thor, nearly lost some tactical marine models as well. In his tax, he's got level three tax all around, including the level three Stern Guard veterans. Anyway, Cider Warp about to eat another grenade, loses a Stern Guard veteran model. And oh, but the, the Lehman Rust needs to be very, very careful because we have an Assault Terminator call in from Cider Warp, as well as the support from Reaper God. This is actually not looking good for Legendmere. He will undoubtedly lose the Lehman Rust. Happens mid sentence. The Rhino, you know, as much as Damien seems like one of the new, newer players in this game, well, he's been doing well to keep this Rhino alive, so it means he's been paying attention and attention and microing it. Anyway, um, Assault Marines shouldn't care a whole lot about the multi-laser fire. However, they will care a lot about this last cannon. Manticore Strike is going to do a huge amount of damage to some to some Assault Terminators, and the Guardsmen should really stop building cover and start shooting, because they will do a huge amount of damage to the Terminators. Well, maybe not a huge amount, but they'll definitely do a substantial amount. So, one-to-one -one VPs, 167 to 108. Can the Assault Terminators get out of there without losing a model? They're taking las cannon shots, plasma shots, and infiltrated scouts running around. Probably going to go for a grenade on the guardsmen that are capturing the point. Grenade goes in, Legend Mirror does not react. So, boom, we had like, all right, exactly four guardsmen models died there, I think, or maybe it was five. Paladins back out on the field, and they will definitely scare off some lowly scouts. Meanwhile, another orbital bombardment. This one, way better hit. Way better hit. Beautiful. And uh, Land Raider Redeemer should try to help to finish off those Chaos Space Marines as well as the Chaos Heretics. Meanwhile, we do have a Corn Dreadnought targeting this Land Raider Redeemer for Thor. The Corn Dreadnought could also activate its Blood Rage to start doing even more damage to this Land Raider Redeemer. We need some kind of anti-vehicle out to slow down the advance of the Corn Dreadnought, but if anything, the Corn Dreadnought actually decides to move away. And it does appear that we have a Thousand Sun Steam from, from our Chaos player, even though he's playing as a Plague Champion. So we've got some Nurgle Thousand Suns. Rhino is still alive. Maybe this thing is almost as good as the Infernal Cannon Dreadnought. And Paladin's now way overextended. Uh, they are not going to die, or are they? Very, very close call. Paladin's one hit point. Are those Paladin's really going to get out of there alive? They turn around. Why are they turning around? All right, Paladin's managed to get out of there with one hit point. And the Rhino's still alive. I think it's because Cider Warp still hasn't really gotten any hard AV. His hardest AV um, is the Assault Terminators, but Assault Terminators can be microed away from, so... It's, well, it's really Cytocorp's fault for not getting any actual AV. Anyway, models dying all over the place. Tax might go down for Cider Warp. And we have the Stern Guard veterans. Why are they just taking it against these, these Ogrens? They need to get the heck out of there. They lose a model, lose two, and they turn around. And now they finally activate and they shall know no fear. Not a good call, in my opinion. Chaos Dreadnought now in a huge amount of trouble and most likely going to go down. Yeah. Didn't stand a chance. But a double cap for the red team. Laz Cannon Rhino does manage to give a heretic. And here we go with the advance from the blue team. But here comes the Land Raider Redeemer. Land Raider Redeemer, if anything, I'm scared for the Land Raider Redeemer. There is a Laz Cannon Devastator from Reaper God. We do also have the Missile Attack. Terminator's about to take a huge amount of damage, or the missiles are going to completely target in different places. Totally fooled me. I thought those missiles were going onto the Terminators, and they targeted completely different things. Terminators teleport out of there. Decap by the blue team. 
Legendmere puts the Commissar Lord on the point, but there's no way he's going to be able to cap it by himself. I think he's going to need to get out of there, or he's going to die. Um, Land Raider Redeemer is in a huge amount of trouble. I'm calling it right now that this Land Raider Redeemer is going to die, except for the Rocket Run. Proven me wrong. And not a bad Rocket Run. Definitely hit a whole... A a lot of different things. However, by choosing to put the rocket run in two different places, he gave up the opportunity to actually wipe things. He could have wiped the Devastators. And another orbital bombardment totally, totally missing. Unfortunately, this is this is not the replay for epic nukes. Uh, we have another orbital bombardment going down right here. The Rhino should move. Please do not lose the Rhino due to just having it there. Consider- Oh, God. He's microed it so well all game just to lose it to not moving out of an orbital bombardment. You've got to be kidding me. That Rhino lived way longer than it should have. Only to die to something that it really should not have died from. Anyway. Force Commander Terminator. You don't see that every day. It does have the Assault Cannon to do a nice 59.73 piercing DPS. Uh, this is definitely an old retail statistic, but I don't think it's been changed. Orbital Bombardment goes down now. This is a much better one, catching a few things, catching some Chaos Space Marines and some Chosen Plague Marines. And they're taking the opportunity to shoot at all this stuff as well. Chosen Plague Marine Death Explosion does heal, so that did help to keep them alive and heal some nearby units, and it will also heal themselves, unlike the regular Plague Marines. Grenade goes in from the Plague Champion. That was a Light Grenade. Light Grenade fully misses, though. Does not even manage to infect the Stern Guard Veterans, level 4 Stern Guard Veterans. And this this Terminator Force Commander is incredibly tanky, but um, it is time for him to go. He can teleport out of there. He can retreat at 200 hit points, 200-something. And I think he activated Battle Cry instead, and he's going to go down now for no good reason. Or not. Totally, totally wrong. Totally proved me wrong. Anyway, we have a Vanquisher Lehman Russ, an Executioner Lehman Russ, rather, um, totally obliterating the Stern Guard veterans. Stern Guard veterans retreat just in time and do not lose a model. Incredibly lucky. Paladins, meanwhile, taking on the Assault Terminators. I think they have the advantage there, so I don't know why they're running away, especially with the support of the Guardsmen. And they do have the Holy Ground ability activated. Um, ter Terminator... Yeah, Paladins. Yeah, they get the Holy Ground ability. Where's this Terminator Librarian? He's coming up onto the field. He's a pretty nice unit himself. And uh, it's actually a double cap for the blue team. They have their natural. They have the red team's natural. And these Stern Guard veterans, all of these things here are just standing here, uh, not doing anything. So Thor, you gotta move your stuff, take back the natural VP, because these tacks should just move forward. They should be able to get that VP back pretty quickly, considering their tacks, and they have the 50% faster captain trait. Manticore Strike goes in. Unfortunately, I think they should actually wait and go for, like, hitting all of these things while they are at the beacon. That's definitely one of the hardest counters to a, oh my god, teleport in with the Paladins. Terrible idea. Meanwhile, get a... And here is... Here is finally... Oh my god! Alright, so we had a game full of not epic nukes, and then finally we get this. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, still could have had better, better placement on the, the last two beams. Um... But at least the, that first beam catching everything there was, was hilarious. And uh, although Reaper God is right that his stuff is like way too leveled. All of it's like level 4. So they were really, really tough and really able to just, uh, to just tank it out. Meanwhile, Land Raider Redeemer for Thor is actually still alive. Damien getting a new squad of Paladins to replace the ones that he lost. And uh, Red Team actually about to get the triple cap. We'll see how long they can hold it. Um, blue Team coming out. Co they're coming out back out pretty strong, so they should be able to get their natural back, although, I mean, a triple cap at this stage of the game, it's definitely a tense situation, and they don't have much time. 
but they definitely have enough units. Reaper God has enough units that he can just put a unit on this point right now, and I really mean like right now, uh, and start getting this VP back, because they really need to put something on it right now. Especially between him and the Admiral, there should already be a squad on this point. And it should be attack squad. All right, they're moving back out. The, the, blue, the red team does not have as much stuff. Ooh, and this might actually be it. Unless they can get something on the point, it actually looks like this is going to be the game in favor of the red team. We have another another rocket run. That's the third rocket run in this game from Legend Mirror. And it actually looks like this game is going to be taken by the red team. And, uh, pretty impressive at the end there to the way they took it back they actually made that push for uh for for their relay beacon and they took out the relay beacon and won the game with it and they they really managed to i think with the way with the way they got that orbital bombardment they really actually managed to exploit one of the weaknesses of um of the relay beacon very vulnerable to things like nukes or manticore strikes because you can't retreat away from them because you'll just retreat right into it. Alright. Hope you enjoyed the cast.